Page five of transformations. Um, so starting here, uh, for y equals f of x plus d, the effect of d is to translate the graph vertically through d units. Yeah, so like when you have addition and it's outside the function, outside the function means vertical, addition, subtraction means up and down. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, translation. So it's up and down uh, because it's a vertical translation. If D is greater than zero, then the graph moves up. And if D is less than zero, the graph moves down. That's kind of what we would imagine, right? Positive goes up, negative goes down. Uh, now comes the tricky part. If Y equals F of X minus C, the effect of C is to translate the graph vertically through C units. Okay, so when the addition subtraction is inside, then instead of going vertically, it goes horizontally. Okay, and do you see how like the default um, format is with a subtraction there? The reason why they put that subtraction there is so that the C value will do what you would think it does. So like when C is positive, the graph moves to the right. And when C is negative, the graph moves to the left. That's kind of what you would imagine what would happen, right? So in order to maintain what you normally think would happen, they put a subtraction sign there. Let's do it with a number. So if you have X minus 2, then the minus is part of the format. So the, the C value is actually positive 2, so it goes to the right. And when you have X plus 2, that's like saying X minus negative 2. So the, the first subtraction, that's, that's because of the format, negative 2 is a C value, so it means it goes to the left. Okay, so it's kind of the opposite what you think, because if you have X minus 2, you might think, oh, minus, that goes to the left. But actually, inside the parentheses, things kind of work opposite. I always call that bizarro world, because inside the parentheses, things work the opposite of what you would expect. So instead of... Uh, a subtraction of a positive number moving it to the left and moves it to the right, okay? Um, for this function where the C and the D are both integrated, the C is subtracted on the inside and D is added on the outside, the graph is translated horizontally C units and vertically D units, okay, right? And in this case, it is translated by the vector and then remember this vector format where you have the top number is a uh, horizontal translation and the bottom number is a vertical translation. Um, we saw this in the quadratics unit. Um, so this is uh, another way of representing the translation in a compact way, okay? Okay, exercise 5C, sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared. So that's a pretty easy um, graph. So I'm just gonna draw my um, my uh, axes here and then I'm going to draw my function in blue so my function is uh, y equals x squared so remember y equals x squared kind of looks like this it follows a pattern height 4, height 1, height 0, height 1, height 4 right? Um, on the same set of axes draw the graphs of uh, f of x plus 2, which is like a vertical translation um, up of the blue function, and an f of x minus 3, which is a vertical translation down. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to code these with different colors. So for up, I'm going to code it as green. And then for down, I'm going to code it as uh, red. Okay, so first I'm going to do up, so I'm going to make it go up by two units, so the middle point goes up two units, the two on the side go up two units, and uh, these ones also go up two units, going to go off the edge of the screen, kind of like that. Okay, so 
uh, the blue function is the what we call the parent function, x squared. When we have x squared plus 2 or f of x plus 2, we move it up two units up. And if we want to do f of x minus 3, then we move it three units down. So 1, 2, 3 units down. 1, 2, 3 units down. 3 units down. 3 units down. 3 units down. And then we draw our curve. Okay, so I just drew uh, the parent function in blue, the green function translated two units up, and the red function translated three units down. What is the connection between the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals f of x plus b if b is greater than zero and b is less than zero? So if b is greater than zero, then it uh, translates up. And if b is less than 0, it translates down. Okay. And remember in our original function, we, uh, we use the d here instead of b, right? Okay. And let's move down a little bit. So we're going to do a, and we're going to do c. For each of the following functions f, Sketch on the set of same set of axes the graphs of y equals f of x. We'll do that in blue. And uh, y equals f of x plus 1. And we'll do y equals f of x minus 2. And um, let's see. Um, so I'm just going to draw my axes. And my um, parent function is 2 to the x. So remember 2 to the x, if I make a little xy table for 2 to the x, I could have um, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4. If I want to do 2 to the negative 1, it would be 1 half, 0 0.5. Okay, so it would look like, 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 4, kind of like that. Okay, so that is my blue function. If I want to do my green function, which is the blue function translated up 1, I would just move each point up one unit. So it would look like that. If I want to show the asymptote, remember the asymptote would be like that. Okay, um, I could I could even draw a dotted line asymptote for each one. The asymptote also moves up one. Finally, I'm going to uh, do f of x minus two, so that would be the blue function moved down two units, two units, two units, uh, two units. Okay, and then the asymptote also moved down two units. Like that, okay? So that was uh, 2a. Let's do 2c. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the parent function. And uh, the first thing, we're, uh, the easiest way to draw the parent function is to plug some numbers into an xy table. So let's do like negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. If you put negative two in there, you're gonna get negative 0.5, right? Negative one half, if I put negative one in there, it would be one divided by negative one, which would be negative one. If I put zero in there, I would get an asymptote. If I put one in there, one divided by one is one. And if I put two in there, it would be one divided by two is 0 0.5. So if I was to graph this, it would look, um, let's see, I'm gonna draw my axes. And then I'm gonna draw negative two comma negative 0.5 negative one, negative one, and an asymptote, and then one comma one, and two comma point five. So it kind of looks like this, kind of like that, right? So that's the parent function. And then I'm going to um, draw f of x plus one, which would be the parent function uh, translated up by one unit. So then 
everything's gone up by one, including the asymptote. And then I can just draw the function going through the points. Okay, and then I'm going to draw f of x minus 2, which means the blue function uh, translated down two units. So I just move all the units, including all the points, including the asymptote, down by 2. And it would look kind of like this. Okay, so I've drawn the three function. I've drawn the parent function in blue. I drew the green function translated up by one unit. And I drew the red function translated down by two units. Okay, and uh, number three, um, for this one, we're going to start with uh, a parent function of f of x equals x squared. Remember, the parent function uh, f of x equals x squared is just um, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, right? So let's draw that. Okay, and so it'll be like that. This is our parent function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, translate that parent function to the right by 3. Because remember, if you have minus 3, it's bizarre world. So you're going to move 3 to the right instead of 3 to the left. So we're going to count 3 units to the right for each one of these points. And there's our uh, green function. And then we're going to translate uh, 2 to the left from the red function. And that'll be our parabola translated two units to the left. What is the connection between the graphs uh, y equals f of x and um, f of x minus a if a is greater than zero and if a is less than zero. Um, so if a is greater than zero, then uh, it's going to move to the right. And if a is less than zero, it's going to move to the left. And you're like, wait a second, uh, wasn't it the opposite of what we would think? But remember, they put uh, subtraction here so that we can um, think of things uh, in the normal mode. So because they put the subtraction there, we can kind of like go back to the regular way we think of things and say, oh, when A is positive, it goes to the right. When A is negative, it goes to the left. Now, um, they that's not as explicit when they have this format here. When they just have a number there, you kind of forget that the, the regular format is subtract, right? Or the format, the standard format is subtract. So be careful with that. Okay, let's move down to page six. Um, for each of the following functions f, sketch on the same set of axes the graphs of y equals f of x, y equals f of x minus 1, and y equals f of x plus 2. So remember, this is the parent function. And f of x plus 2, you might think that that's moving to the, the right, but it's actually moving to the left. So it's actually going to be left 2. And then f of x minus 1 is actually going to be right 1. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, some of these functions. So we're going to do a and c. So x cubed. Let's let's draw the uh, the parent function first. The parent function for x cubed would be would be um, let's see negative two to the third would be negative eight. Negative one to the third would be negative one zero one. Eight, something like that. Okay, so let me draw the axes here. And then I'm going to kind of draw it here. It's going to go off the edge of the page, so not ideal. But there's the parent function for x cubed. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the green function, which is 1 to the right. And then I'll do the red function, which is 2 to the left. Now, what if you freak out and you don't remember, you know, the rules here? What you could do is you could say, oh, okay, 
if I have x of x minus 1, that means that I'm going to put x minus 1 in for the original x, right? I'm going to replace it. And so this is my new function, x minus 1 cubed. And then I could make an xy table for it. And I could say, okay, what happens if I put, you know, some of these numbers in here? Like if I put 0 in here, it would be 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is minus 1, so that would be minus 1. If I put 1 in there, 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 cubed is 0. And then you could like graph out 0 comma negative 1 is there, 1 comma 0, it's there. And then you could kind of do it the old fashioned way. You could graph it out, but you should not get in the habit of doing these problems that way because sometimes they're not going to even give you the function. They're going to give you a drawing. And if they give you a drawing, you cannot uh, use algebra and substitution to figure it out. Okay. So here is uh, f of x. Um, so this is my uh, parent function. And uh, I remember how it graphs from the last page. So I'm not going to do the xy table. Remember, it's got, it's got a horizontal asymptote here. It's got a vertical asymptote here. And then I'm going to make a green function, which is one unit to the right. Yeah, and then I'm going to make a red function, which is two units to the left. One, two. See what I did there? I just took the points at 1 comma 1 and negative 1 comma negative 1. I moved them 1 to the right to make the green function. I moved it one to 2 to the left to make the red function. I was careful with the asymptotes to make sure the asymptotes also moved 1 to the right and 2 to the left. Okay, so that was C. Let's go down to, to number 5. For each of the following functions f, sketch on the same set of axes the graph of y equals f of x y equals f of x minus 2 plus 3, y equals f of x plus 1 minus 4. So these are a little bit more difficult. You can see that uh, like this is the parent function, um, but minus 2 plus 3, that would be uh, to the right 2 and uh, up 3, right? And in f of x plus 1 minus 4, that would be to the left 1 and down uh, four, right? So let's try to do this one. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the parabola again. Now we know the parent function of the parabola pretty well. We don't need to do the table anymore, right? Okay, there's the blue function. Now we're going to do the green function, which would be two to the right and three up. So I'm gonna first do the vertex, 2 to the right, and 3 up. So that would be there. And then the other two neighboring points would be there. Okay, 2 to the right and 3 up. That would be the green one. Now I'm going to do the red one, which would be 1 to the left and 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so the red one is two to the, uh, 1 to the left and 4 down. All right, that wasn't too bad. Now we're gonna do C. So remember C is the rational function, one over X. That's pretty straightforward. We already are used to doing that one, so we know that there's asymptotes here. So it looks kind of like that, right? And uh, then we're gonna do uh, the green uh, translation, so 2 to the right and 1 up, so 2 to the right and 1 up, uh, 3 up, sorry, 1, 2, 3, and then this one would be 2 to the right and 3 up, asymptotes would be like there, right? Okay, now let's do, um, take the blue function and we're going to go 1 to the left and down 1. One to the left and down, through down four. Sorry. One to the left and down four, and then the other side would be one to the left and down four. 
Okay, so the, here's my asymptotes here. Okay, so I have drawn, um, it's kind of hard to see these, so let me highlight them a little bit. Okay, there's the red one, and there's the green one. Okay, I, I moved the green one uh, two to the right and three up, and I moved the red one one to the left and four down. Okay, now let's go to number six. Copy these functions and then draw the graph of y equals f of x minus 2 minus 3. And so here, remember how I said you cannot do these problems by plugging it in the numbers into the translated form because sometimes they're going to give you a, a picture like they did here and they don't tell you what the function is. Okay, so then you need to kind of interpret um, the format here. So remember, f of x minus 2, x minus 2 here, is that going to the left or the right? You would normally think that subtracting would go to the left, but this is bizarre world, so you're actually moving to the right by 2. We're moving right by 2. And minus 3, that goes down 3, okay? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in two steps. So I'm going to take each one of these little points here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move them to the right two points. So there's one, I said, yeah, two units. Two units would be a better way of saying that. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the function moving two to the right. Now I'm going to do the second step. I'm going to move the green function three down. So one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay. Okay, like that. So this is the two steps. I took the black one, I moved it two to the, the right, and the red one, I took the green one, and I moved it three down. You could do it in either order, right? If you like did the red movement first and then the green movement, it would still end up in the exact same place. Right, so it turns out that the translations, it doesn't really matter what order you do them, but be careful because when you start putting stretches and other things in there, then sometimes you need to do it in a very specific way. Okay, number seven, the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 2 um, is translated three units right to g of, the x, g of x, find g of x in the form, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is. Um, this is an algebraic problem. So uh, first thing we need to do is we need to express this transformation as the form f of whatever, right? And remember, if you're going three units to the right, that's the same thing as f of x minus three, right? Because x, x subtract three means move three units to the right, okay? Normally you would think subtraction is going to the left, but this is bizarre world, so it's actually going to the right. Okay, so how do we change this into this form? Well, uh, we already did this on the first couple pages of this unit. When you have x minus 3 in the parentheses, that just means you need to put x minus 3 into, oops, that just means, oh, come on. I'm not really used to this yet. It just means you need to put x minus 3 in the little boxes, right? So I'm going to put x minus 3 squared minus 2 times x minus 3 plus 2, right? x minus 3 squared. Okay, so that is my format, um, which is g to the x, okay? Then I just need to simplify it. Simplifying this is just, um, you know, 10th grade math, right? I'm going to do x minus 3 squared. That's x squared minus 6x plus 9. I'm going to distribute the negative 2. It would be negative 2x plus 6. And then I add 2 at the end. So then I just combine like terms. So it would be x squared minus 8x and then 9 plus 6 plus 2 is 17. Something like that. Okay, so this is g of x. All right. 
And now we're going to do one and three of each one of these. OK. All right. So we're going to take x squared, which is our going to be our, um, what do you call it, parent function. And we're going to translate it. And look at this. This is what we called vertex form before, right? But can you see that the vertex form is actually like a translation form? So basically minus 3 here, the h being positive 3 is actually to the right by 3. And then 2 is up 2, right? This is vertex form, but it's actually a translation form. And that makes sense, right? Because vertex form is basically saying where the vertex has been moved to. It's the same thing as translating the whole graph, right? So what happens? Uh, let's see. So basically what we're doing is we're taking uh, a parabola and we're moving it three to the right and up two. So any point on the parabola is going to be moved to the right by three and up two. So in the case of zero comma zero, we are going to, um, oh, by the way, find the image of the point an image of the point, it makes it sound like, oh, it's just the point. But image of the point means the point under af, after it's undergone the function transformation. So like, for example, in this case, uh, we start out with 0, 0. After it goes through this transformation, 0, 0 is going to be moved 3 to the right and 2 up. So it would be 3, 2, right? Um, part 3. Uh, find the images of the falling point on f of x, where x equals 2. So um, so the point where x equals 2, that would be uh, the complete um, coordinates would be 2 comma 4, right? 2 comma 4 is the point on the parabola. So we're going to undergo this transformation. And so that would be 2, 3, three to the right of, of 2 would be 5. And then 2 up from 4 would be 6. So 2 comma 4 would become 5 comma 6, right? OK. And, and what about part B? So part B, we're going to do uh, this one and this one. And so find the points on f of x, which correspond to the following points on g. So here they're giving us the, the destination, like after the transformation, and we're supposed to figure out what the original point was. Okay, so they're giving us uh, the, the points on this function, and we're figuring out what the, what the corresponding point is on the, on the blue function. So like, for example, we're just going to do the opposite. So instead of right 3 up 2, we're going to do left uh, 3 and down 2 and that will give us the original point okay so like for example 1 uh, moved 3 to the left would be negative 2 and then 6 moved down 2 would be 4 so the original point if 1 comma 6 is on the g function negative 2 comma 4 is the point that corresponds to it on the f function and for the last one here we have uh, oh, it's let me write this as a decimal. It's a little bit easier to think, right? Okay, so there's the decimal values, and then if I move three to the left, that would be negative one point five for the x value, and three. Uh, let's see, down to uh, four point two five would be two point two five. Okay, and you can check to see that these are right by substituting negative 2 into x squared, and you would get 4. If you put negative 1.5 into x squared, it would give you positive 2.5. Okay, so we're done with uh, this page 6.